In this video, I'm going to talk about how to convert from kilometers to miles and nautical miles in C. And we're actually going to make it so that we do the conversions in a nice looking table. And we're going to do a series of conversions, starting from a starting kilometer value, stepping by a step kilometer value, until we reach some end kilometer value. So we're going to actually, we're going to actually have a whole series of conversions that are done in a nice table. So to do the conversions themselves, we'll actually make some functions to help us. And these will actually be pretty simple functions. I'm going to say here double km to miles, and then I'm going to say double km, and this is going to actually then take in a kilometer value, and it's going to return a value in miles for the conversion of this number of kilometers to this number of miles. And I'm going to do the same thing for nautical miles. So nautical miles are a bit different than regular miles. They have a different distance to them, and we'll do the conversion from kilometers to nautical miles as well. So nautical miles there. And what I'll do is I'll provide the definitions of these functions down here. And these are actually pretty simple functions. The conversion itself is really just a multiplication. So we can say here, return, and we'll say here, km times 0 0.62137. And then I'm going to do a similar thing for nautical miles, where I'm going to say return, we're going to say km times 0 0.53995. Five, seven. And these will give us reasonably accurate conversions from, you know, kilometers to miles and to nautical miles here. And so that's our functions there to do the conversions. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to have the user enter in a starting point for the conversions, an ending point and a step value, and then we'll output the results into a nice table. So we'll do a whole series of conversions. So I'm going to say here, double start kilometer is equal to zero. That's going to be our start kilometer. We're going to say double n kilometers equal to zero. That's going to be our end point of the conversions. Double step is going to be the, the step value by which we step each time we do a conversion. And I'm going to say here, double current kilometer is equal to zero. And that's going to be our counter value. It's going to keep track of what conversion we're doing currently when we, when we output these results into a nice looking table. Now, we're going to let the user enter in the starting point, ending point, and step values. And we'll do a little bit of input validation when we do this because it makes no sense to convert negative kilometers, right? There's no like, there's no such thing as like negative 20 kilometers. So we'll actually have the restriction that whatever the user enters, it has to be greater than zero for, uh, for certain values. And for other values, it can start at zero. For a start kilometer, it can actually start at zero and that's okay. Like we could start doing conversions at zero because zero converted to miles would just be zero still. So we're gonna say here, do, We'll say printf, we'll say enter the start cam value. We'll be able to say enter, we'll just say start cam value, we'll just keep it smaller, start cam value like this. We'll say scanf, we'll say percent %lf, and we're gonna store the result into start cam. And then we're gonna actually check to see if what was entered is at least zero. Because if it's not at least zero, we don't wanna use it. We're going to say if start cam is less than zero, we're going to say this doesn't make sense. So we'll say print F, we'll say start cam not greater than or equal to zero. And we'll just output that just to tell the user that like, hey, you got to enter a start kilometer that's at least greater than or equal to zero. And if the user continues to enter in values that are not at least zero, then we're going to continue to ask them to enter values. So this is a do while loop here that's being used to do some input validation because we're going to keep asking for start kilometer values until the starting kilometer value is at least zero. And so we could give this a little test run here. We could say like compile it here and run it. And oops, did I forget a semicolon somewhere? Where did it say this kilometer? Oh, down here it looks like. I forgot a semicolon. All right. We'll clear this. We'll recompile, run it again. So start kilometer value. If I put in, say, like negative 10, it'll ask me again. And it says start kilometer not greater than or equal to zero. If I put in negative two, it'll ask me again. Only if I put in a value that's greater than or equal to zero, like zero, will it be okay with it. I could also put in like two or whatever. And it'll be okay with that too. And that's going to be the starting point of our conversions. Now, we're going to do a very similar thing for step and end kilometer values. So our step kilometer value is going to be the uh, value that we're going to step by each time we do a conversion. So if we start our conversions off at say like five kilometers and we have a step of five, then we would go from five to 10 to 15 to 20 to 25 to 30 until we're at the end kilometer value or until we've passed it. And so our step kilometer value, it has to be more than zero. 
it has to be more than zero for it to make sense. Otherwise, the table we're going to output is never going to end. It would never make sense because we're not stepping by anything. We're not increasing the amount that we're doing the conversion by, by anything. So let's actually input the step value now. Let's copy this because it's more or less the same thing here. But now we're going to ask for the step kilometer value. And we're going to store the step kilometer value like this. And we're going to say step kilometer not greater than zero. And we're going to check that if the step kilometer is less than or equal to zero, we want to continue. So if the step kilometer is less than or equal to zero, we want to warn the user that like, hey, that's not okay. The step kilometer has to be greater than zero. And that's our step kilometer. And then similar for the end kilometer value, it's also going to have to be something that is greater than zero. Because if the step kilometer was entered as zero and we're going up until the end kilometer, if it was zero as well, then our table would make no sense. Like there'd be no data in the table because we're not going from anywhere to anywhere if we're just going from zero to zero. So the end kilometer is similar to the step. We're going to say end kilometer, end kilometer, and we'll input the, the end kilometer just as we're doing the same, just as we are the step kilometer here. And then we'll test this out. So we'll give this a quick test and we'll we'll just print out the start, step, and, and end that we get just to make sure that we're actually getting the data correctly. So we'll say here, start kilometer, and we'll do the same thing for step and end. And whenever you're writing code, it's always okay to just sort of output some incremental results, some partial results, just to make sure that you're on the right track before you continue with the rest of the program here. So we'll do a clear here, do a recompile, and run this here. If I put a start kilometer value of zero, that's okay. But if I try a step of zero, it's not okay. It says step kilometer, not greater than zero. So I put a step of one and we're okay. If I try to put an end kilometer of zero, it'll say that's not okay. If I put an end kilometer value of five, that's okay. And I get start of zero, step of one, and end of five. And so we're happy with this. This means that we're accepting these numbers correctly. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the conversions now in a table going from the start to the end by the step. So it's going to look like this. We're going to say here four, and I'm going to say current kilometer is equal to the start kilometer. And then I'm going to check, is the current kilometer less than the end kilometer? If it is, we want to keep going. And then I'm going to do current kilometer plus equals step kilometer. And that's the three parts of our for loop there. And I've kind of split it off on, on three lines here just because It'll be a little tight to fit it all on one line here, but that's the three parts of our for loop is here's the, you know, initial condition here. Here's what we're checking. And here is the, uh, the incrementation that's going to happen each time. And we're going from the start value until we reach the end value. And we're stepping by the step value each time here. Now to make the table nice and pretty, I'm going to do some printf of some new lines here. So I'll say printf new line, new line, new line. And I'm going to printf the headers now. So I'll say printf. And I'm going to say here kilometers and I'll say, let's say we've got kilometers is what it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Maybe I want to make the column here 20 spaces and left aligned. So one way I could do this is I could, I could put the string here. I could say like kilometers is what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 characters there. It looks like. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so ten characters there. I could say space, 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 ten times, right? And give myself like a twenty character column there. And I could then, when I print out the results, print them into a twenty character left line column. The other way I could do it is like this. I could say here printf, and I'll say this. I'll say printf percent minus twenty dot or percent minus twenty s. And then I'm going to say here percent minus 20s and then percent minus percent minus uh, 20s and then percent minus 20s again. And these are going to be my three columns for kilometers, miles, and nautical. So I'm going to say here kilometers. Then I'm going to say here miles. Then I'm going to say here nautical. So nautical here. And what I'm doing here is I've made basically three columns here. And there's got to be a percent there. And these are three columns now that I'm putting the information into. And I'm putting in kilometers, miles, and nauticals into these three columns here. 
and I'm defining them using the, the special placeholder syntax where I'm saying, instead of just percent %s, I'm saying left align 20 columns of width, 20 characters of width for this output here that I'm gonna give you, which is kilometers. Same thing for miles, same thing for nautical. And what's gonna happen now is when I go to output these things, we'll get them in these, these sort of columns here. So if we, do, if we were to do a clear here and compile this, and then run it here. What is it saying? Uh, percent conversion to data argument, insufficient arguments. Oh, do I have a, uh, an incorrect uh, piece of syntax here? Probably. Let's see what I did wrong here. Um, more percent conversions than data arguments. So I've got one, two, three there. And I have, oh, I forgot the comma there. That's what I did. I forgot the comma. So we'll try this again. We run it here. Start kilometer, I can say three. Uh, step kilometer, I'll say five. End kilometer, I'll say 20. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this bigger now so I can see the columns properly. So 20 here. And I get now kilometers, miles, and nautical. And if you see what's going on here, I'm getting these nice columns now. And I'm getting columns that I can enter data into. So I'm gonna use the same sort of column system to output the data from my conversions when I do them down here. So I'll throw a new line on this. And what I'll do is down here now in my loop, I'm gonna say here printf, and I'm gonna say here negative 20.4f. And what this means is, I'll put a percent there, what this means is output a floating point number in a 20 width column, left aligned with four digits of accuracy. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the next two numbers. So same thing for miles, same thing for nautical miles. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to then output the current kilometer. So the current kilometer, output the conversion to miles. So I'm going to say km to miles of the current kilometer. And then I'm also going to do the conversion to nautical miles. So km to nautical miles of the current kilometers as well. And what I'm doing now is I'm outputting data into a similarly formatted column for each conversion here. So I'm saying like, the current kilometer, which is the current kilometer that we're currently converting, output that into the first sort of column I've made there with four digits of accuracy uh, in a 20 width left line column. And then same thing for kilometer to miles into this column here that I'm making. And then same thing for the conversion to nautical miles into that column there. And then when we're all done, we'll do a printf of a new line here, just to printf and, and get us on a new line before we start, start our shell again there. So this is really it. This should be the entire program. So let's give it a test now. And hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. So hopefully it'll all compile here. So we'll make it nice and big here too, just to make sure that we can actually kind of see everything we want to do here. So let's try this out. We're going to say here clear. And I'll just make it just a touch smaller here. Just that way it all fits. Okay. So I'll say clear. We'll recompile it here. We'll run it here. So start kilometer, I'll say zero. Step kilometer, I'll say one. End kilometer, I'll say 10. And so we get a conversion here from, you know, zero to zero to zero, which makes sense. One kilometer is this many miles, this many nautical miles. Two kilometers is this many miles, this many nautical miles, all the way down to nine kilometers. And so we go up to, but not including our end value. So our end value is when we stop basically. And here we've got now a nice table of conversions. We could add one thing to the table. One thing we could add would be maybe like a, a, a row of stars. So we could say like print F and print out maybe like 60 stars or something like that. So we could say like here, I could say print F and before, before I start the actual data, I could say this, I could say print F and I could output 60 stars here. So I'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. And I'll output this. We'll say two, three, four, five, six times. And this will just give us kind of like a nice looking uh, kind of header display here. So we, we can now say start kilometer, I'll say zero. Step kilometer, I'll say one. End kilometer, I'll say 10. And now we get this sort of nice separation of the, the column headers and our actual data in the table there. And you know now we can kind of make any sort of table of conversions we want. So I could say run it again. This time I'm gonna say start kilometer value of 0 0.5, step kilometer value of 0 0.1, and n kilometer value of we'll say we'll say uh, two point three, and now I get this whole table of results here. So I get from zero point five, stepping by point one each time, up until 
but not including you know our our, our end value there, which is two point three, right? And so now we have this nice table of conversions here. We can kind of modify it depending on what we need. So if I needed to go from you know a start kilometer value of a hundred to we're going to say maybe 500 stepping by 25, we can do that. So now we have, you know, another table of results here going from this starting point value to the ending point value, but not including it. And we're doing the multiplication here each time to get miles and nautical. And we have this nice table of results. So this is just an example of converting from kilometers to miles and nautical miles and putting the results into a nice table. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers including courses to help you develop C programming projects.